Hi everyone, Rad Drew here. I recently posted uh, this image on my uh, uh, social media sites the other day and I had a lot of people ask if I would share uh, my process for how I did this. This is a, uh, a combination of two images. Um, one was this image of a dancer from the Cuban National Ballet. Uh, this, these are ruins just outside of Havana and we took dancers out and photographed them in this location. Um, the other is a tree uh, in a road here in Indiana, um, out in rural Indiana, outside of Indianapolis, where I do a lot of photography. And by combining the two, I ended up with an image like this. Um, each of these images, my first step in this process, was to take each image, the dancer and the tree, into Snapseed and perform um, my standard workflow on both images to get them looking the way, both looking as good as, you know, the way I want them to look before I start the blending process. Um, so I've already done that with this image and with the tree. They've already been processed in Snapseed. And if you want to learn a little bit more about that, I've got several Snapseed videos on my YouTube channel, so you can go and check those out. Um, so the tool that I used to combine or blend these images, um, just go to it here, it's called Image Blender. Um, I'm going to just type in image and there it pops up in my applications down here. It's the red and white one on the left and um, it's a, not a new app. It's been around for a long time, but it's very simple and very good at what it does. And that's what I love about it. Uh, it's simplicity and how good it, it is at what it does. So it allows us to combine two images. So you'll notice on the on the screen now we have two empty boxes, one on the left and one on the right at the bottom. I'm going to start by tapping on that left box. I'll go to my library. I'm going to scroll down to the album that I created with these images in it. And I'm going to select um, the dancer, the image of the dancer for the left. Then I'm going to go over on the right, go back to the library and to our album, and I'm going to select the tree. And when I do that, um, you notice that now we've got both images, one on top of the other. The tree is actually on top of the uh, the dancer image. If I slide the slider to the left, I see only the dancer. If I slide to the right, I see only the tree. What I'm looking for is some combination there, uh, there in between. And um, one of the ways that I'm going to, to choose how this looks, um, one of the features of Image Blender is that it contains uh, a variety of standard blend modes. And blend modes are uh, they're just instructions that tell the two images how to how to come together, how to blend. Um, you'll find them in you know Photoshop, Topaz, uh, any of the desktop software that you might use, and also in other um, mobile apps. You'll find blend modes. Um, if you look up at the top of the screen, you'll see a pencil, and then two um, images overlaying, and then two uh, like an X of arrows there. If you tap in the center. Um, where the two um, overlapping images are, it brings up the blend modes at the bottom. I'm going to tap on that again and it puts them away. Now I'm going to just show you another shortcut for that. Another way to access the blend modes is simply swipe up on the screen. When I do, it reveals the blend modes below. You can tell right now that the normal blend mode is the one that we're using because it's, it's highlighted there and it says normal under it. The others are sort of grayed out. You can go through one by one. There's multiply. There's uh, screen overlay. There's just a bunch of them. Here's a. This is a very, very harsh one of color burn. Um, you've got all of these different ones. The one um, there's there's plus darker. That's kind of interesting. But the one that I want to use today is multiply. I'm going to slide down on the screen to reveal the slider again and I'm going to slide to the right and yeah, I'm going to slide to the right and kind of bring in that tree more. Now I like what I'm seeing here but the tree is coming over her over the figure of the dancer and I want her to be figural in the scene and so I want to to take the trees brush those away from her body. So to do that I want to use the um, the masking tool. So if you go again up to the top where you have the pencil and the, the cross of arrows, the pencil is your masking tool. You can tap on that and it takes you into the masking mode. I'm going to cancel and go back for a second. There's a shortcut to take you into the masking mode also. 
you simply swipe to the left. Whoop, I always do the wrong way. Swipe to the right and it reveals the mask. So um, it's just a shortcut to get you to your masking tool. Now once you're in your masking tool, you can go down here and you can change the size of your, your brush if you want. Um, you can create an offset to where the your finger is, is just a little bit offset from where the paintbrush is on the screen when you brush. Sometimes it helps you see what you're doing better. I'm just going to leave it normal right now. But you can see here you can change the size by using the little slider here. I'm going to keep it relatively small and say done. And so that's the button on the left. Then over here on the, the next button you see is a little fuzzy dot. That's your brush. And this is your palette. When you tap on it, you have a, a hard-edged brush on the left and then the soft edge brush. Those are the two that we're going to use today. These other two are really useful, but I don't want them, I don't need them for today. They're both gradients. One is a circular gradient and the other is a horizontal gradient that can be really useful for different kinds of masking. But for today, I'm going to start out using the hard brush and I'm going to take my two fingers and I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to begin painting away or wiping away the top layer image of the, which is the image of the tree and all those branches. And I want to wipe it away from her body. Now I'm using that real harsh brush, which is great for this part that's inside the outline of her body. But when I get to where I want to get the edge of her face and all of that, I'm going to switch to that softer brush in a second. So first I'm going to go through and get all this central stuff. And I'm just going to take it off of her skin. I don't care about getting it off of the clothes. Um, just off of her skin. So I'm sliding down here and getting it all. Now, when I get down into the fingers and things get really kind of close edged, I'm going to switch to the soft brush and continue down here. And now I can get closer to those edges without creating a really um, sharp, uh, sharp edge. Now, if I decide like right there, oops, I really didn't want to do that. I'm going to turn my brush upside down again and I'm going to paint over that and put it back. So now I'm going to go back to uh, removing and let's go back up here. I've got the soft brush now so now I'm going to go over these edges of her of her face here and wipe away the uh, the branches that are coming over her face. Again, I'm not going to worry about what's on her body, but I am, or on her uh, her clothing. But I am going to come over. I want to get it off her skin, so I'm wiping down this area right here to remove that top layer, so it doesn't show on her skin. And I want to get right up on that edge, and this is where the soft brush is helpful on this edge, because it lets you kind of get right up to it. Again, a stylus is another way of of uh, making this work and I'm, I'm going pretty quick here. Um, I could have used the bigger brush. In fact, I'm going to switch back to the, the harsher brush because it takes less time to, to go through it and just get these central areas down here in her slipper. And then I'm going to switch back to the soft brush again. And now I'm uh, getting those edges and there we go up there and you can see it, it doesn't take long and I, and you, I know you might spend a little more time than I'm than I am going through this but even going quickly um, I'm getting it's it's turning out pretty good so there we go I've wiped all that away and essentially that's all I need to do I, I've got the top layer wiped away from the dancer which I want to be figural in the scene so now I'm going to go up and hit the save icon or the save button at the top and we've now saved that image. We haven't saved it to the camera roll. We've saved it back to the main part of uh, Image Blender. And now I can play with the slider and I can make that really intense if I want and or I can back it off just a little bit. And so now there we have our image. We've got all of the tree off the body and it's kind of a cool image. So now I'm ready to save it. I'm going to go up here to the share icon at the top and I'm going to tap on save and now I'm saving it to the camera roll so let's go out and take a look at it in the camera roll um, come out here and there it is and there's our image it's uh, pretty cool that's all there is to it you can um, 
use Snapseed to, to create collages uh, as well. Um, you can add multiple images, double, um, you know, add additional images to the two that we already have here in Image Blender. Um, you can add numerous images and uh, mask those in. And um, I, I may do another video here in the future just showing you some of the things that I've done um, with multiple images, more than two images uh, in a collage. But that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Um, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up on YouTube and, um, um, you know, uh, consider uh, signing up for my newsletter or checking out my website. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to shoot me an email or a text or a message in a bottle, however you want to do it. And um, until next time, keep on creating.